This week, we're going to be going over the 98th lead code problem, validate binary search tree. Let's dive right in by reading the problem statement. Given a binary tree, determine if it is a valid binary search tree. Assume that a binary search tree, or BST, is defined as follows. The left subtree of the node contains only nodes that are less than the node's key. The right subtree contains nodes that are only greater than the node's key. Both the left and right subtrees must also be binary search trees. Let's take a look at the first example. So here we're given a binary search tree, which is 2, and to the left of 2 we have 1, which is of course less than 2, so that's valid, and we have 3, which is greater than 2, to the right of 2, so that is a valid binary search tree. Let's take a look at example 2. On the root, we have 5, and to the left, we have 1. That, so far, is valid. Now to the right, we have 4, to the right of 5, and that already makes it an invalid binary search tree. Let's take a look at the algorithm that will help us solve this problem. Suppose we're given a binary tree that looks like this. Now you may be thinking the easiest way to do it would be to check if the left and the right nodes of the root tree are less than and greater than the value in the root tree. Now this is how I originally completed the problem. However, an issue does come up. Now, what we don't account for with this method is suppose we say that inside of here there is a 1, right? It's not a 4, it's a 1. In this case, it is true that 1 is less than 2 and 7 is greater than 2. And then here we're going to see that 0 is less than 1, great. And when we're in 7, we're going to see that 1 is less than 7 and 8 is greater than 7. So we're actually going to be returning true even though we want to return false. So we can't just check if the left and the right nodes values are less than and greater than the root nodes values. We're going to need to pass in extra parameters to keep track of the maximum and minimum values that a left or right subtree can have inside of its root value. So let's see how that's going to look. Starting off, we want to pass negative infinity and positive infinity as the max and min values to our helper function. And then we want to check if the root value is less than or equal to negative infinity or greater than or equal to positive infinity. In this case, neither of those are true. So we're going to assume that this node's value is correct. Now we're going to traverse the left and the right subtrees. When we are traversing the left and the right subtrees, let's take the left for example, we're going to say that the minimum value is still going to be negative infinity, but the maximum value is going to be the value from this root node. So in this case, the maximum value is going to be 2. Here we can clearly see that 1 is greater than negative infinity and less than 2. So we can mark that as complete. And now we're going to traverse once more. And in this case, we're going to say negative infinity and 1 is negative infinity is the smallest value, 1 is the largest value it can be. And we're going to notice that 0 is in fact between these boundaries. So we're going to mark that with a check. And of course, when we're passing into the right subtree, we want to say that the minimum value that can be inside of this entire left subtree is 2, and the maximum value is going to be infinity. So we're going to see that two, that 7 is between 2 and infinity, and we're going to say that this is right. Now we're going to go to the left subtree once more. And when we're going to the left subtree, we're going to say that the minimum value is going to carry, get carried over from here, and the maximum value is going to be 7. Now, we're going to notice that 1 is not between 2 and 7. And in this case, 
we're just going to say that this is false. We're going to pass in 2 and infinity. And of course, 8 is between those two values. So we're going to mark that with a check. So clearly we can see we have an error right here. And this is going to be the general algorithm that is going to help us solve this problem. Let's analyze the big O time and space complexity of this algorithm. We know that we're going to have to traverse the entire subtree no matter what, entire binary search tree. And so in this case, we're going to have a complexity, a time complexity of O of n. Now, you might think that we just have a simple time complexity of O of 1 because we're not really storing any values. However, we know that when we are making recursive calls makes the stack of the program go larger and larger because we're going to be calling sub functions recursively and in the worst case we're going to have a binary search tree that you know points all the way to the right like this if it is unbalanced like this however on average we know that it is going to be a log n space algorithm. But in the worst case, of course, it's going to be O of n. Now let's take a look at the code. It follows pretty straight from the algorithm that we've just went over. So we're going to be starting off with the helper function that is going to take in the root and the minimum value to the left and the maximum value to the right. In this case, the minimum value is just going to be negative infinity and the maximum value is going to be positive infinity. Inside the helper, we are going to just return just return true if there is no root. Nothing to do there, pretty straightforward. Suppose we have a root and its value is less than the minimum value that it can be, or it's greater than the maximum value that it can be. In that case, it's pretty simple, we just return false. Now here's the key step, which is we want to validate the left subtree and the right subtree. So we're going to pass in to the helper function the left value for the left subtree and the minimum value in the initial iteration of the loop is just going to be negative infinity. However, the maximum value is going to be the value of the root. So it's going to be the current value. And of course, the same thing is going to happen when we validate the right subtree. We're going to pass in the right subtree as the new root and here, we're going to be passing in the root's value as the minimum value. So for example, let's take a look at 5. When we are going to the right subtree, what we're saying is we want to pass in this subtree 4, 3, and 6. And the minimum value that this can be, the minimum value inside of this function that we're going to call 5. So it can't be less than 5. And the maximum value is just going to be infinity. So when we are inside of this loop, we're going to hit this check where 4, right here, we're going to be inside of 4, and 4 is going to be less than the minimum value, in which case we're just going to be returning false at the end. So the last thing we want to do is, of course, validate the left and right subtree. Let's just run this and make sure it runs. As always, I got you guys with the fastest time solution, faster than 98.74% of Python submissions. That's, that's actually pretty fast but the memory is not quite there yet. Anyway, doesn't really matter. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, leave a like and subscribe for more in the future. I post new videos every Monday. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys next time.